Welcome to BioTalk, a GBAC TV production. Today I'm with my co-host, Patty Olinger, the executive director of GBAC. Patty, how are things up in Michigan? Oh, you know, it's uh, the snow is melting, so everybody's happy. <laughs> Great. And you, we have someone with us. Who is this? Ah, Jeannie Henderson. Um, Jeannie Henderson is the chair of the ISSA Residential Cleaning um, Committee. And also she is the CEO. CEO of Jeannie's Cleaning here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Great to have you, Jeannie. Um, I knew who you were, but I thought I'd have Patty introduce you a little bit. So this is going to be a fun bio talk because the theme is not normal. We're going to call this loosely Patty's Fridge Handle. <laughs> and why do we call this Patty's Fridge Handle? Patty, I think you had an experience recently that showed that um, not every house is squeaky clean. Tell us about that. No, in fact, my kitchen failed miserably. Um, I was asked to do um, some radio spots and TV spots as far as there was a, a scientific article and study that was done recently on how clean is your kitchen or where are the germs in your kitchen? And they had they did this little study where they gave um, different people uh, turkey uh ground turkey to make turkey burgers and they thought they were testing a new recipe in fact they were being watched as to where they were touching and it really surprised a lot of people something surprised them something's not so much but um one of the dirtiest or germiest places that they found was the spice rack um and everybody was like really um but you know Kitchen faucet handles didn't surprise anybody because what do we do? We have something on our hands and then we turn the faucet on and we forget to wipe the faucet off or the, the soap dispenser. Well, I I looked at that and when I was preparing for, you know, doing the radio spots and TV spots, I went and I realized that not everybody has this at their home. I went and I got my ATP meter and I went around my kitchen. And I was swabbing different things. Um, I knew that I had used certain spices in the last couple of days. My spices weren't too bad, but my refrigerator handle, <laughs> it was, it, it was hot. I will just say that. And so then it was one of those things where it's like, okay, what would normally people do? Well, first of all, I went and I got a, my handy dandy microfiber towel and I just wiped it. Um, because as we know, just even a dry microfiber towel will remove dirt and grime and, and depending on, you know, how good your microfiber towel is, it actually, you know, does a really great job. And the numbers went down quite a bit, but it still wasn't where I wanted it to be. So then I thought, well, what is normally what people do? They take a spray bottle, they spray it, and then they wipe. Well, I still wasn't getting the numbers down. So I had to put my science hat on and I had to look at, okay, the science of cleaning and the science of disinfecting and how does that affect our ATP meters um, and the results. So I went ahead and I just got soap and water and I wiped down and my numbers went down to zero basically on that handle. Interestingly, and I think this, this potentially, Jeff, is another bio talk eventually, is I took that disinfectant and I sprayed and my numbers went up a little bit. And what people need to better understand is what is that, again, ATP meter telling us, it's not a measure of how something is disinfected, it's how much you've removed that organic material. But there still may be some organic intact material there and when you hit it with a disinfectant, what happens? It breaks the cell, it releases ATP, and then you find it. The reality is, is though, we know that we have really reduced those germs um, by those by cleaning and disinfecting. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, is this surprising to you? Tell us about you know, what happened. Yeah. So, you know, it is interesting and um, we've learned a lot more about uh, the science of cleaning and the science of disinfecting and that they are really two different things. And disinfecting is a two-step process that Patty just demonstrated there. Um, you know, that it you can't just disinfect. And I think we see a lot of people doing that in their kitchens. Mm -hmm. They have those wipes 
you know, just sitting on the counter and it's a disinfectant, but they're not removing the organic material before they're disinfecting. And it's, it won't completely remove it if we don't have that two-step process. So um, that was the first thing that I, that I like heard right there, because I have seen many people do that. Um, I have one friend who talked about, you know, that they were, they became kind of panicked about disinfecting high touch surfaces like refrigerator handles and, and things like that. And they took the finish off of all of the beautiful fixtures in their home because they were using this strong disinfectant all the time when they could have been using a gentle soap and water and almost achieving the same result. You know, and they wouldn't have had to have used that heavy disinfectant like all the time. But um, yeah, so kitchens, you know, they definitely are a haven for germs and um, every germ that exists out there in the world, we're bringing it back into our house every day. Every time we leave and come back, we're carrying those into our home. And especially when we're cooking raw foods that might have other contaminants on them that we're spreading around. So understanding where they are is a really important part of keeping your home clean, but also understanding how to remove them. What is that um, two or three step process to removing those germs? And most people don't understand it and they don't take the time to read the labels on the products that they're using in their home. But I, I thought that was also interesting too, that you prove you had proven Patty that um, just a simple microfiber towel makes a huge difference. Um, and a lot of times people aren't using a great tool to do the cleaning. So investing in good tools also makes a huge difference. And that's as a professional cleaning, you know, as a professional cleaner, we like to invest in, you know, great microfiber products that are proven. And of course, then we train our team to use those products effectively and correctly in people's homes to achieve that result that Patty ultimately got on her refrigerator door handle. You're absolutely right. And you bring up a really good point, And that is the tools that we use. Number one, if it's a cleaner or disinfectant and it's a, you know, some type of chemistry, obviously, I don't care if it's water, water is a chemical and it's a great solvent. Mm -hmm. When we look at that, know what you're using and what is its purpose. So read that label. We don't like to read labels. And I know that. And that's why initially all I did was grab whatever was there and spray. And because I know that that's what most people will do. And the other thing is you brought up the whole thing of tools in the equipment that we use, whether it's a scrubby pad, that study showed that our sponges, you know, they get kind of dirty and grimy and, and those were really high. That doesn't surprise any of us. Um, Jeff uh, and I did a, a bio talk recently on, you know, making sure your tools are, are maintained well. Cause I had stayed at a, a hotel recently and it was a five-star hotel and, you know, they kind of, you know, they claimed that they really cared about health and safety and wellness, you know, couldn't find uh, hand sanitizers anywhere, but what really got me is they left a microfiber towel in my room. Um, it was in the, in the, in the sink of my bath, of my bathroom. And this is the actual towel. And as you can see, it has spots all over it. If you know what microfiber is supposed to feel like, this no longer does anything. It basically is a piece of plastic spreading things around. So maintain a good microfiber and maintain your tools, whether it's microfiber, whether it's your HEPA vacuum, make sure that you're fil you know, looking at those filters. Um, you know, it's really important that we maintain our tools and occasionally take a look at them to make sure that they are functioning and most efficient as they are, as they mm -hmm. should be. So, Jeannie, you know, as you were talking about cleaning the kitchen and all, I wondered, your, your team's going to homes, many homes a day. What are the dirtiest areas in the entire home and where do they spend more time? And using these tools, you know, they make it makes the work faster, more efficient, but still more time on those areas. What would those areas be? Well, you know, the kitchen and the bathrooms take the most cleaning time. And uh, this that's where we do most of our living. We call those the wet areas of the home. Um, 
when we're dusting, we call those dry areas. So oh. most of the living spaces, living room and bedrooms, we're mostly dusting. Not a lot of scrubbing is happening there. It's usually the removal of dust, except for like wiping door handles and light switches, because those are the areas where that's where we're carrying the germs into those spaces and um, we're touching them. And then the next person touches them and they pick up, um, they can pick up a pathogen from a door handle or a light switch. Yeah. But for the most part, kitchens and bathrooms take the biggest amount of time and floors, right? The floor is the biggest surface in the home. And uh, when we're cleaning, everything moves from the ceiling to the floor. And the last thing that we do is clean those floors. And it can take a really long time to get floors clean in a home. And it's a, that's an important part of it. I think a lot of people don't think about how much their things that are on their floor are touching other surfaces in their home. Mm. Like if you have a gym bag or your purse, um, you know, has it sat on a floor somewhere and then are you setting it on a counter in your home? And so that's why keeping your floors clean is really important too. But I would say, yes, kitchens, number one, bathrooms, number two, and floors, number three, take the mo the bulk of our time. And those are areas that we have to clean wet. And that's wet where areas. we're removing All right. their wet areas. Yep. And um, it's, it's interesting. As I w became a professional cleaner, I, I created this whole new awareness of where the germs are hiding. And it's interesting when you talked about spice racks, because I love to cook. And, um, and I do, I disinfect my spice bottles, which <laughs> I, I'm sure very few people do that. But, uh, but I've gotten in the habit of doing it and my salt and pepper, my pepper grinder and all of that, because your hands have been in contact with all kinds of things. And then you use those and it's just, this is disturbing, like disturbing information. It's a Petri dish. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, this is this actually, if you have kids in the house and um, it's, it's always fun, they're always looking for projects and, you know, they may have a science project at school, get them in spend $10 and buy a little UV light, you know, a, a fluorescent little light mm -hmm. and you let them go around and, and find, believe me, they will find things that you're going to be sitting there going, Oh my, I did not realize it. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you just step back a little bit and you look around the room and you say, where do I touch? You know, it is those switches, the door handles, the lights, the lamps in, in that, um, that we just don't think about, and especially in our homes or our businesses, um, we don't think about those things. And floors are one of those things that we touch. We touch them with the bottoms of our shoes or gym bags or purses, or if we drop something, the five second rule really doesn't apply. That's true. That's true. And um, the other thing that we often forget is our vehicles. And, and we spend a lot of time in there. You talk about air quality and you talk about high touch surfaces. Um, and I don't think a lot of people or, or our cell phones too, you know, cell phones mm -hmm. are constantly, look where you set your cell phone, you know, where it has opportunities to pick things up. And, uh, you know, so it goes beyond the kitchen, beyond the refrigerator handle, um, my business doesn't get into people's cars and clean, but I do suggest uh, that people spend some time uh, cleaning in their vehicle. Um, and I actually keep cleaning products in my car. So um, yeah. I keep a duster and I keep wipes in my car so that I'm able to wipe down surfaces frequently because um, especially right now when there are lots of little bugs going around, um, you know, if you don't want it, I mean, you're here in Michigan because of the salt and the mud and everything. Um, I do the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I got work to do, I guess, because spice bottles here never get wiped and no cleaning products in my car. So, <laughs> well, they're just but opportunities. We always learn and we can improve. Right. In fact, um, this episode of Patty's Fridge Handle. Her fridge handle should now be clean all the time. Right, Patty? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. You know, I will say you walk away going every time I touch it now, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> mm. 
Well, this has been great well, being with you both. Anything else to add? Well, you know, I mean, you know, our whole campaign right this year, um, as a lot of people know for ISSA is we need to rethink clean. And it's really important that we start rethinking clean and cleaning for health. That's what we're really here for is hygiene really has a huge impact on our health and well-being and wellness. And mm -hmm. so that's really important that we start rethinking clean. Absolutely. And Janie, anything last to add? Well, and as, you know, as a professional cleaner, that is our goal is uh, we want to help people maintain their home. It's not only for aesthetics, but it also really affects um, their health. It affects everyone's health when we're cleaning. So not only should we all be kind of cleaning as we go, but um, doing some more deep cleaning on a regular basis is where professionals can really come in and come alongside families to help them um, have a healthier home and you know better air quality all of those things. Um, we've really been rethinking how we serve our families that way and helping them have a healthier, healthier home because we want them to have better lives.